Empire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, am I sharing the whole screen? No. So what are we even doing? So I'll just try to give like, I, I made a video here in the first 15 minutes, I'm going to try to condense it in practice, explaining it in like three. So the main, this is the common simulator, simulator but for reals, right? We're, we're actually going to design a real economy. It's super cool. Uh, the, the main dynamic that we're focusing on is this relationship between the people who have impact hours, all of you guys, and the people who put money into the hatch, the, the backers, as we call them, the backers and the builders. And so the complicated thing to figure out is this hatch impact hour rate and, the, and how that relates to the relationships between the people who put money in, the backers, and the people who uh, earn impact hours. So for instance, here uh, uh, in this, this line is basically a curve with an asthmatope. And so you, to just describe this line and to move this line, you pick a point on the curve and that's at, at this, oh yeah. And the curve is, okay, what is the impact hour rate versus the, uh, the raise amount? And everything is, uh, the biggest variable that we have in this whole dashboard is, well, how much are we gonna raise? And we don't know, you know, we don't know how much we're going to raise. But the cool thing is to align the incentives so that everybody wins if we raise more, right? If we collect more wrapped X die. And the way to do that is to make the impact hour rate, the, the value of one impact hour uh, go up as well. Uh, but also the, um, the percentage of money that goes to the, um, people who put money in also go up. So like everybody wants the price to go up uh, or the, the amount collected to go up. So yeah, this is kind of the hatch. That, that's the goal of the hatch configuration. But of course, there's other variables too that are important, like how many days should the hatch last? Uh, the minting rate, like should this thing be like Doge where there's like 10 billion tokens, right? Or... Do we make it like, you know, more valuable than, than Bitcoin? It's like there's only 395 tokens minted, even if we raise $2.5 million, right? So your economy, your choice is the game. And, uh, and, and what's really cool, I just want to like shill this a little bit harder, but this is the first time in the history of humanity that there has been a bottom-up economic design like where really the people get to decide how the economy is going to be designed you know that's never happened it's always been top down always in all of crypto and all of ec economics beforehand it's a little bit of a, a, a cabal telling people how the economy is going to be and in best case in crypto at least people get to opt in right in normal default world, there's the cabal and everyone's forced to live within it. But in crypto, people get to opt in. Well, with the common stack and TEC, and because of all your guys' work, now people actually get to design it and say, this is what we want before it exists, which is wild, you know? Uh, yeah, and then there's the DAO, which is just like, how does the DAO vote? You know, uh, it's a Moloch DAO, Moloch DAO equations. So that's it. Um, any, have you guys played with it at all before? Do you, do you get stuck anywhere? Uh, no, and I, I did not use uh, uh, it before. So maybe I, <laughs> it's my first time <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. Man. It's so much more fun in Discord when we can throw the music on. 
Should we move to uh, Discord? We can, yeah. No. Um, I have a question on this first part here. Mm -hmm. So how do you choose like the, the, uh, the ratio of the impact R8 and like uh, the, the backers, like how, how do you choose those? I mean, like in general, how do you choose yeah. best those parameters? Yeah, so like, uh, I can, so, okay, let, let's just, I'll just go through it, right? Like, okay, minimum goal, 100K, you know what? Let's make it a million. Um, maximum goal, 50 million, uh, let's make it smaller, right? And, and honestly, the best way to start is in token log. Um, so, so I'm going to like control Z and exit out of this dashboard move and say, you know, maybe the best place to start is to see other people's submissions and then, uh, fork one. So there's uh, three good, uh, submissions that already exist. Well, they're okay. One of them is a fork of Vitor's. Uh, oh. Softgov. We want to be in. GC hash code. So this is the defaults. Uh, our economy, the technocracy's choice. This, these are the, the default choices that Vitor just decided to put in, right? And then we have uh, this, this is a proposal with the backer bias. So it's like really geared towards people who put money in. And this is a small cap bias towards builder, builders. So it's like, this is really for uh, people. This is more focused on like rewarding the people who have gotten us this far. And those are the top voted ones right now. That's cool. I proposed all of them. Yes. I voted on all of them. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> early, early days. Uh, so here you can kind of see like the, what the charts look like. And, and it's kind of cool to be able to flip back and forth and just like compare them. Vitor right now is working on something that will make uh, make it easier to compare these uh, impact hour charts to each other. Cause right now the scale is changing. Like this is like 400. So like this is uh, the impact hour rates really high here. This is like a 500, 150 impact hour rate at 2.5 mil. Whereas this one at 2.5 mil is like a $30 are going to, for every, every impact hour is worth $30. And in this one at 2.5 mil, every impact hour is worth $70, right? Mm -hmm. So you can kind of like start comparing these things and you can really see what's going on in this chart. Total Raptex die collected. How does the impact hour rate change? How does the total supply held by builders change, right? Like they start out, if we raise very little, they get 40% of the tokens, but uh, at 3 million, they only get 20%. Um, yeah, and backers rage quit percent is also interesting, right? So it's kind of addresses the risk that someone who's putting money in, uh, their risk is mitigated to some extent because they can rage quit. So if, uh, if we raise, as we raise more money, the, the, their risk is reduced because if they don't like the commons upgrade or if something goes wrong, they can still pull out this percentage of their funds that they put in. And so it's, it's good to look at these options and see like this one, uh, if we raise less than 1.25 mil, then we fail and give back all the money. Uh, but the impact hour rate starts at 20, goes up to 100 if we raise this amount. Uh, this is the one that's geared towards backers, like the builders 
even at the lowest thing, they only get 13% of the currency, right, of the tech tokens, so 13% of the governance power, and as low as 3% if we raise 25 mil. And the rage quit percent is super high, right? This is very, like, attractive to, to backers. You put in a uh, hundred bucks, you can rate and you don't like how things are going, you can get 86 back. It's pretty nice. And if we raise uh, 25 mil, then you can get uh, 97 back. It's like hardly risking anything. So, so what we're trying to do is find that sweet spot or the balance between um, amount raised okay we predict how much like we're gonna raise that's first thing uh the max we don't know could be whatever um but uh like we should find that that balance between impact hours rate at certain level or stage of of uh funding but also and also like in align those incentives and also satisfy the backers and satisfy the builders uh like throughout the whole um time range say or funding period or something like that? The, the, um, the range of funding options, you know? If you're like, um, there's no way we're raising less than a million, and but I can't imagine us raising more than five mil, then like that's the only space you really need to worry about, right? And see, okay, how, what do, how do we want to reward everyone? And, and when you, if you, if you want to focus on making a high rage quit, like a low risk for people to send money in, then maybe start by forking the one that's like a backer bias. And if you want to start with one that rewards the builders, you know, maybe start with the, the one that it says small cap and you can just click this link here and it will preload the, uh, the, this person's submissions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Eventually. You know, like this submission is kind of ridiculous. If the value of, of the tokens is like so high, like the minting rate is so low, 0.01. Is he, who is, is this guy thinking? Um, can you share the link um, to the GitHub repo, please? And just to and and how and how does how do, I mean how does the minting rate relates to other uh, parameters that we just discussed over here? And how how am I supposed to know? Um, what rate to choose like if I if I pick whatever uh, amount there or the number what should I be looking at the chart to tell me oh Marco you're wrong or oh you're good so the the minting rate is probably it, well so there's a it's really a social variable and so uh, like if this minting rate says that to get one tech token, you have to send a hundred Raptex die to the hatch. As a backer, that's what that's what the variable is defining. But it really the so the total number of tokens doesn't really matter, right? It's it's a social, it's like a psychological thing. Like oh wow, the tech token starts out being very valuable. You know, it's a hundred dollars for one token. Holy shit. You know, like, how do you want that perception to be for the users? And this is what I'm, this is to decide what our target is and what, you know, what we're shooting to raise. Like, that's a, a purely social parameter. It doesn't have anything to do with smart contracts, what our target goal is, but it does matter, you know? I didn't do the best job of explaining this to you guys. I'm sorry, but if you play, uh, if you play with the hatch minting rate, you can see this chart where it says total tech minted, and it'll change. Is there um, some estimation of 
the um, not the best target goal because uh, as you mentioned it's like social thing but maybe like mm, target goal but it's um, I don't know it's easier to manage or to build um, the next um, the next steps for the command I, I don't know just to yeah. because uh, 1.5 million is a huge amount but maybe it's not <laughs> enough and we are not aware of that and I mean I'm not aware of that and um, maybe you can um, ease uh, how, how, how I will put uh, the, the input I, I will uh, I will choose I don't know what I'd say is there's this I, there is this idea of impact our debt which is like uh, and that that's kind of critical here like how much which effectively is this rate it affects the rage quit value at target goal and affects the impact hour rate like we're going to have about we're estimating about 10,000 impact hours so if we don't raise enough then those impact hours will not be worth very much you know uh, and uh, the 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 other side of it which i think you're more pointing at is the like well, what about for actually funding projects and the goal of what we're trying to do? And that's going to be mostly talk, figured out on the, on the second side. But for sure, the more that we raise, the more, more that RAPTX that we collect in this um, thing, the easier it will be to fund projects in, in the next stage. But the ratio of how much money goes to the funding pool how much money goes to the bonding curve and also the um, like b basically the profits that the the on paper profits like the the jump in price from the from the price people pay for tokens here versus like the uh, the price of of the token on the bonding curve like this dynamic that's where we have to start thinking, how much money do we want to start off with to fund projects? But we don't have to necessarily think about that in this stage so much. It's really optimizing for like, how do we reward the people who created value, the value and how do we reward the people that are uh, putting in cash? Okay, get it. And I really love this chart down here, the <laughs> individual impact hours, because you can go in and find your name. So like, let's see, where, where's Merlin? Merlin, you're number 22 on the impact hour list. Uh, and you can see like, okay, so under these parameters, you will get uh, 61 tokens, hatch tokens for your 108 impact hours. Those 61 tokens, if someone wanted to mint 61 tokens for themselves, it would cost them $6,100 at the target goal, right? They would have had, uh, uh, well, no, equivalent, I guess, you know, now that I think about it, equivalent to mint at target goal, it, that's not, it's the, this is the equivalent to mint at any time. You don't have to say at target goal. I need to make an issue. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, and then rage quit value at target goal. So this amount would, uh, you know, the, if you wanted to, you could just be like, dude, I hate the TC. This whole thing is garbage. I'm going to rage quit. And, I'll, and you would get $4,000 straight up. You could pull $4,000 out of the DAO. Now, I think that would be foolish because, of course, like we're going to do a bonding curve and it'll be worth way more if you just hold out for a month, but maybe you're like, dude, are you kidding? Dogecoin to the moon. Uh, I'm rage quitting and put it all in, in, dog, in the dog money. So. Okay, I, I check, <laughs> but that sounds great.
I think I forked from the small cap with the backers bias small cap thing. And the toll gate fee on this one is like a thousand wrapped dex die. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. That's a lot. No, that's reasonable. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's an attack. Great question. So there's an attack, unfortunately, on Malik Dallas, where uh, this vote proposal buffer, it's like um, an edge case thing where if you make a proposal, if someone makes a proposal and then they vote yes on it, right, and then someone right after it makes a really horrible proposal that says steal all the money from the Dow and give it to me, right, uh, and somehow it actually starts to get traction and passing, uh, the person who voted yes for this can't rage quit until this is executed. So if there's like a short period of time between proposals, you could have this weird scenario where they need to rage quit in that three seconds between two proposals, right? Like, mm. and so we have to have a, a time delay between proposals and that's this vote proposal buffer to mm -hmm. just avoid that weird edge case scenario. Uh, so, but if you make that eight hours, uh, then you're told, then basically people can, there's a, it's called a griefing attack where you can say, oh yeah, you know, if, if toll gate fee is $1, you know, I'll just make a bunch of stupid proposals and that will delay the Dow eight hours for every proposal. So I can steal everybody's time for $1 uh-huh right 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 so that's why it's like it's kind of prohibitively large so that people actually have to care about their proposals in order to like put them through yeah exactly and this DAO shouldn't be voting on a lot the point of this DAO is to upgrade to the commons the point of this DAO mm -hmm. is to gather stakeholders and then design the actual economy and then like play the common simulator game yeah um, yeah Okay, that makes sense. And so, the, but just, I, the toll gate fee doesn't, they don't get it back after their proposal goes through, or they do? They do not. Okay, and, cool. uh, But they don't necessarily, but it could be returned to them, right? Through a vote. So someone can make a vote that says, hey, give me $1,000 for my proposal fee and send $1,000 to that guy for his proposal fee. And then everyone gets their money back. Okay, cool. Thanks, Griff. No, it's it's a it's really too bad. We should. I mean, Audrea wanted this to be out of your hands. Our auditor was like, "No, we we can't let them choose that. Why would they want to understand? It has to be like five thousand dollars." <laughs> and uh, uh, he said, no, your economy, your choice. Damn you, smart contract auditors. <laughs> Wait, so you actually think a thousand is even too low? Like yeah. she, she was saying 5,000 makes sense? Uh, Andrea, Andrea was suggesting 5,000. What really matters is how, what your vote proposal buffer is. And then what is the cost? And how much do you think you're going to raise? Because it's like, what is the cost? What, how much money is someone willing to pay to delay the DAO's decision-making process for lulls, right? Like if, if vote proposal buffer is like, you know, uh, 10,000 hours, then a thousand dollar fee is super small because like for a thousand bucks, you can delay the DAO for like four years. Okay. You know, like, that seems fun. I'll troll. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it makes sense to make the vote proposal buffer, like, 24 hours. Because even, like, eight hours is, like, it's this awkward time where, like, you could just, a proposal, and then people are sleeping, and then in that eight hours, like, this whole thing can happen, you know? Yeah. So yeah, I agree. It, it, it's, a, it's, a rare, it's a rare edge case where someone would vote yes on a proposal, and then there would be a malicious proposal right after so yeah. it's a rare edge case well you, the other thing oh Vitor you made it rage quit delay that was fast thanks man. uh so uh the other thing is the rage quit delay which is the execution delay like after you vote how much time do you need 
uh, for everyone to see the results and decide if they want to go with it or not. Mm. So there's, that's like the main buffer that's like, oh yeah, I, I need to wake up and see what the results are and then have the option to decide. All right, that makes sense. Okay, cool. But I still don't, I wouldn't have an, I wouldn't argue against something, a vote proposal buffer of 24 hours. It's not, it's not a bad move, right? Uh, I would argue against a vote proposal buffer of two hours. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds, I wouldn't do that either. Um, and then if I make the vote proposal buffer longer, I naturally have to make the toll gate higher. Yeah. Basically, that's what you were saying with this kind of like, oh, if you made the vote proposal buffer like 10,000 hours and then like 1,000 is the vote duration, so. Yeah. I mean, would someone be willing to throw down a thousand a die just to delay us for a day? Like, hey everyone, your attention was brought to you by, you know, zero uh, X, trade on our exchange. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, Maybe I'll make it, I don't know, I'll make it $2,000 or X day. Hey, token engineers, buy into my ICO. <laughs> Sorry for delaying your, your DAO, but this is important. <laughs> Did you check about uh, the psycholo psychological effects of um, the starting price of the token uh, on an ICO or something like that? I mean, um, if you conduct 100 ICO, ICOs, uh, but just the, the price of the token uh, the starting point changes. What the best way to uh, have uh, most more fund? I have no data on it. Yeah. Anecdotally, I, I like cheaper tokens. I think the cheaper tokens are preferred. I, when we did the DAO, like we actually made the decimal 16 because there weren't standards around these things, you know, but instead of having a token with 18 decimals, we made it 16 so that you'd send one ether in and get a hundred DAO back. At the time that made the DAO token worth six cents. And, and we thought a lot about that psychology, but that was also a different scenario where it's like open to the general public. 
and what is the psychology of the general public, whereas our audience is like the common stack and token engineers. So who, you know, for this audience, what psychology do we want to work towards? So it could be, I, I still think that a cheaper token is probably the way to go, but maybe, you know, like in this one, I'm going with just one so that things are just, things just make sense. You know, it's like, oh, I put in one wrapped X die, I get one TC out. Okay, this is easy okay. for me. But, you know, I think it's totally cool, like a hundred and then, you know, this, that will mint, you know, less than about a, a billion tokens if we reach a match goal, max goal of seven mil, you know? And like, I don't know, there's some interesting dynamics that are nice, you know? It's like, oh, there's room to grow. And one, uh, I didn't get it about, uh, why did you choose uh, 16 decimals? Uh... Because at the time, it was easier for the code to just say uh, one way of, of uh, ether is worth one way of DAO tokens. Yeah. Right, the lowest unit of ether is worth the lowest unit of DAO tokens. And then we just defined in the front end that, and, and really in the smart contracts that the decimals is 16 so that one ether is worth a hundred DAO, mm. okay. but one way of ether is worth the smallest unit of DAO as well. Okay. But that was the wrong thing. And actually Rune from Maker, we, I was in like a meetup that he was at and he was like telling me how stupid that it was a horrible idea. It's going to destroy the standards of Ethereum. Like, like we need to rally around just 18 and then change it in the smart contract. And, or even just that, like the psychology doesn't matter was his main argument. It's like, come on, who cares? One DAO is worth one ether. I'm like, no, but the psychology matters. <laughs> Rune was right though. We shouldn't have done that.
Hey guys, I'm going to take a short break for our next call. Cool. Thanks, Griff, for uh, all the explanations. It's much clearer now. Now I know what I'm clicking on this screen. <laughs> the only thing I would say is, before, if you don't, if you can, share your results on GitHub. Submit it. You can always delete it. You can always cancel the issue later. So submit, submit it as soon as you can. All right, bye, cool. Marco. Thanks. Cheers. Bye, everybody. Bye, Marco. See Is it running simulation for you or? Sometimes you have to refresh, but. Uh... You, if you refresh, you lose all your params. No. <laughs> don't like this solution. <laughs> I know. I don't think mine's working either when I run simulation, but this was happening before. Like if you run only a couple of times, it doesn't. Yeah, okay, yeah, because like, it, it's, uh, yeah. I think it's not exactly because of the number of times you run, but it's due to the timeout. It has a timeout, like if you keep, if you keep it without running anything for a while, it has a timeout and I can look to try to fix it. So if it takes too long, <laughs> I'm slow at picking params, it kicks me out.
Is there a character limit on the hatch strategy thing? Yeah. Uh, 8,024 characters. OK. I, oh, I don't know. I wonder if it would be useful to have like a character counter. I know we're like really happy with the dashboard, but a character counter would be nice. Oh, hey, Griff is gone. Yeah. Uh, he said on, on Telegram that uh, his computer shut down. Oh, no. And he lost all his params. No, he lost his params. That's worse than <laughs> yeah. our refresh problem. Yeah, because I think he, 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 he has almost finished to write all of the description. Ah. <sighs> Brutal. Poor Griff. I'm Um, I think well, I leave and I'm still stuck with my <laughs> simulation, but maybe if I retry in one hour or something like that, it should be okay. Okay. Oh, you should refresh the page. Did you refresh the page? But I... I